this video we'll be talking about displacement in Blender Octane. The first question and the most important one you need to be asking yourself when working with displacement is uh, when do I need to use displacement? So I would say it depends on the distance between your camera and the object of interest. If let's say you're modeling a, a room and then there is a cupboard and object on top of it, if the camera is far from the object and it's not the center of your uh, image, you can work with normal maps and bump maps as they will be 10 times faster than displacement. In that case, it will not matter whether you use displacement or normal map. It will look almost the same from that distance. However, if the object is the center of your composition, that's when displacement comes in handy as it will enhance the details of your mesh. One thing to note about displacement is that unlike bump normals, it actually displaces your geometry. The difference between displacement and uh, let's say displacing your geometry in edit mode is that a uh, a displacement is uh, is actually displacing your ge geometry in render time. So when you go to, uh, let's say, uh, when you go to viewport shading, you will not be seeing your displacement. But uh, at render time, it's the engine that does the displacement. What you saw in the intro shot with the perfume bottle was made with displacement. Displacement allows us to create complex patterns and shape that would otherwise be uh, time consuming to model. Let's now talk about displacement in Blender Octane. So I'll go to Shader Editor. Let's see, so for this object I made a simple universal material and I plugged in a grayscale image into a texture displacement. We also have a vertex displacement and we will be talking about this later on. Uh, as my input I have a 32-bit a EXR image, which is the one you can see here on the right. 32-bit EXRs are by far the best format to store uh, displacement textures and we will be talking about the reason for that in a little bit. The first parameter is mid-level. Uh, this here, this slider here is grayscale, so 0 means black, 1 means white, and 0 0.5 is gray. So if we go to our viewport shading, let's call this the level at which our geometry is sitting, let's call it the base level. So this just indicates uh, which color will be associated with this base level. So if we put it to 0 0.5, it means that all the pixels that are gray are going to be at the base level of our mesh. Let's go to side view to see. Um, so here, this one is my pentagon, and this one here is my circle. So if I put it to 0, it means that all the black pixels will be sitting at the base level of my geometry. If it's 0 0.5, it means that all the gray pixels are the ones that will be sitting. So all these pixels here are actually this ground plane here on the base level. And if it's one, obviously it means that the white pixels are going to be sitting at the base level. That's what uh, this mid-level means. Um, it's usually good to set it at 0 0.5. And when you want to work in Photoshop on your displacement map, just start by adding a solid color. And the hex color for gray is 80, 80, 80. It's very easy to memorize. Level of detail uh, should usually match the resolution of your input texture. In my case here, it's 2K. Sometimes I, I do displacement in, in 4K in case I have a shot that's zoomed in on the object. Height uh, just indicates the, the how pronounced the displacement is. And to be exact, if we go again to side view, height is exactly... Uh, uh, height, height divided by 2 is exactly this distance here. So let's see, if we set this to zero, this one is in meters, the unit is in meters. So this is 0 0.012 meters, so about 1.2 centimeters. And if we go to the measure tool and try to measure this distance, we would find about, yeah, about 0 0.6. Yeah, it's give or take. It's 0 0.6, so by multiplying this by 2, it will give us exactly this number. Uh, displacement direction uh, i usually leave this at uh, follow vertex normal i think it indicates the direction at which the displacement is going to occur but yeah i usually leave this at the default value a uh, filter type okay this this one is important so let's see so you usually in my previous tutorial i said a lot that uh, with displacement it's good to add blur to your object so if we zoom in here you can see that the tra transition between gray and dark is very so is very harsh. So in order to make it more subtle, you can add uh, some blur to to have some in between um, gray pixels in between the bl the black, for instance, and the the zero point five gray. 
but uh, Octane comes with this uh, built-in uh, uh, filtering type. Yeah, this built-in blur. Um, I usually set it to Gaussian. It gives me a good result. And then because let's say if we keep, if we set it to none, you can see that this harsh transi transition here is um, we have some artifacts, and this is not. It doesn't look good on your object. So the way to fix this is good by by choosing the filter type by setting the filter type to go Gaussian, and then you can play with the filter radius. This is just how much pronounced you want your filter to be. I usually set it to four or five. It's usually a good uh, compromise. But yeah, sometimes I find this gives uh, good results. I don't know if it's the exactly similar to blur in your image in Photoshop, but I think this gives a very decent result. If you notice with height, it impacts the height of both black and white pixels. So let, what if we want to, for instance, make uh, this uh, pentagon here flat and then uh, make this circle go up more. So we, will, we want to have the heights independent. So there are two ways to do that. The first one is obviously changing your texture. So for instance, you could make the pixels on your black uh, pentagon brighter, a little approaching gray a little more. Or if you want to, if you want the circle to go down, you could make these darker. The other way is, is using a, a gradient map. So let's add a gradient map. And then we will look for a baking texture. Is I, and I notice it doesn't work directly. If we plug our texture into the gradient map and then the gradient map directly into the texture, you can see that our displacement disappears. So we need to plug a baking texture in between first. Okay, so what you do here is so we want to uh, reduce the uh, hold on let me let me make this more pronounced so that uh, it's more obvious so we want to reduce the height here but keep uh, leave this one intact so what we do here is we go to the uh, this black cursor here and then we can go to we can make it gray which means that it will push uh, all the pixels it will add an offset but since these are already full white it's ca it's capped at one but these pixels are going to be offset so this way if we move this cursor we can control the height as you can see here so when i go up to this it's it's already disappeared because it became gray since the all the pixels were pushed by 0 0.5 so now you can control the height with this hold on i'm gonna sh make it show like this so yeah it's it's very subtle but this gives you a way to control the height of your displacement for the black pixels without affecting the white ones and the uh, opposite is also doable you bring this one back to black and then you set this one to gray and then you can do the same but yeah this is another way to control your height in case you don't want to retouch your texture in photoshop or gimp or whatever let's talk a little bit about the difference between texture displacement and vertex displacement um, i think texture displacement is a very powerful node and it's it's among the reasons is it's among one of the reasons I, I started playing with Octane because it allows you to have uh, a lot of detail without subdividing your mesh. This is the difference between these two. The first difference is that for vertex displacement to work, you would need to subdivide your object. Um, so let's see, if we plug our vertex displacement, you can see we have no result. But if we go to edit mode, subdivide, and then shift R, shift R, shift R to start to add in more subdivisions, you can see that at some point we start getting the details. It's still jagged, but um, I think it's possible. Yeah, you can also add subdivision directly uh, in the node. And I think that you'd also need to blur your texture in order to have these uh, to have these transitions be less harsh. Yeah, I think vertex displacement works. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna go back. Vertex displacement I think works exactly like the experimental feature set in cycles. So you know that if you go in cycles and then in the feature set you set it to experimental, if you add a subdivision modifier to your object, you have this adaptive subdivision option, uh, which allows you to um, subdivide your your mesh depending uh, dynamically depending on the level under like the details in each surface. So if maybe if it's if a surface is flat, it will not subdivide it as much as in uh, another area of your object where there is. A lot of displacement. I think this is what adaptive subdivision means. 
yeah, this is one of the reasons I really like texture displacement because you don't have to subdivide your mesh. But one, one thing to note is that texture displacement does not support motion blur. So if you want your deformed object to have motion blur, you're going to have to use vertex displacement. Another important thing is that texture displacement does not support procedural textures. So uh, in order to use a procedural noise, for example, you need to bake that first. That's why in the previous example, when we, would, when we added a mapping range after our texture, uh, we had it to add. Uh, we had to add a a baking node in order to make it to bake it into an image texture again. So just search for baking texture, and then you set this to your desired resolution or the one in your uh, input texture. You plug it into texture and then texture out into texture. Now we will have the detail. So to summarize, I think that texture displacement is uh, a far more convenient solution unless you want motion blur in that case you'd need to use a vertex displacement node the last thing i want to talk about is the difference between using exiles which are usually 32 bits as opposed to jpegs which are 8 bits so this is the texture i will be plugging in my into my plane this is the 8-bit version and this is the 32-bit exr the first thing you can notice is that the transition between the different shades of gray is a lot smoother for the exr so if we switch again to the 8 bits one you can see that we can almost see all the band then. So here I have the 8 bits one. When I plug it into the texture displacement, you can see this is my texture. You can see this, I think it's called step in, which uh, ruins your displacement. This is not good. Whereas if you use uh, this one here as a 30 bit uh, EXR, if we plug it in, you can see that the texture is very smooth because uh, the, bit, the, the pixels have a lot more data to work with. This is one of the pros of using EXRs. If we plug the 8 bits again, we can even enable the Gaussian blur to help a little bit. You see here it helps quite a bit, but you can still see, it's very subtle, but you can still see, see a little bit of band in here. Whereas with the EXR plus the Gaussian blur, it's almost going to be invisible. The texture is really smooth. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something and uh, have a great day.